Some 200 years ago, Māori warriors were experts at one-on-one -on -one combat with traditional weapons like taiaha, mere and patu. But with the arrival of the Europeans and their guns, the face of warfare would change forever. With their new firearms, Māori cut their teeth in the intertribal musket wars. It was a brutal training ground for battles with the British in the New Zealand wars. One of these battles saw Māori and British forces trading shots at Rua Peka Peka Pa in 1846. This is a flintlock musket uh, made in England probably around about 1820. And it's a very interesting example of the flintlock musket because it was actually captured by a British naval officer at Kawatis Pa at Rua Peka Peka on January the 11th, 1846. And it's got a little plaque on the butt recording that. In New Zealand, hundreds of muskets were traded with Māori. This one almost certainly would have been traded in the Bay of Islands area for a product such as flax, for example. So this one was probably uh, used by a Māori warrior any time from the 1820s to around about the 1840s. What was significant about Rua Peka Peka where this musket was taken? Well, it was a modern part in the sense it was built for firearms warfare. They had bomb shelters, it had trenches. It withstood a massive bombardment by cannon and uh, rockets. It was more intended as a lure. And Rua Peka Peka, a number of the warriors outside the power were actually up in the tree, what we'd call today sniping at the British troops. Were they accurate? Not particularly. Some of the old books used to say that you'd be lucky to hit a haystack at 100 yards, but the, the interesting thing about these is that in European warfare they were fired in volleys by trained troops, which means troops lined up in ranks firing on command. The lack of accuracy was made up by the, the what we call the volume of fire. Ah! The old saying, you know, fire, fire when you see the whites of their eyes, these were so inaccurate that soldiers were supposed to hold their fire until the enemy was really, really close, and then you'd have a chance of hitting a, hitting a human being. <laughs> so these muskets, trained soldiers are supposed to have been able to fire 12 rounds a minute, but I think that's a real exaggeration because you had to go through a whole range of motions to actually load and fire. The first thing you did was bit your bullet, you poured your powder in the, in the barrel, you spit the ball down, you get your ramrod out, you twirl it, ram the, ram the ball down, and wad it in place so it holds, and then you had to pull your, what they call the cock, back, open up the firing pan, the pan, get a little powder flask out with a fine, fine grain powder, pour the powder into the pan, close the steel, pull the cock back, raise it to your shoulder, fire, the main charge goes off, there's a great sort of bang and flash and a whoosh and great clouds of smoke, the wall is on its way. But a flash in the pan is when, you've, when you ignite your primary, your priming charge, but the problem is no spark goes through to ignite the main charge. This is so it's called a, a, a sort of a, an event that doesn't really go off the plan. The musket was used for over 150 years, hardly a flash in the pan, and a prized weapon during the New Zealand wars.